software engineer at a company called Solve Health, where we work on making booking urgent care online really fast and easy. Uh, and today, uh, or actually at Solve about a year ago, we started looking at migrating our consumer front end to Remix. And it's been a really great experience, and we've learned a ton. And I want to talk today about a really specific part of that that was initially a potential barrier and it ended up being a really cool learning experience about what Remix can do for us. Uh, and that is powering a hybrid native and web app via Remix, uh, which might sound a little wild, but bear with me. Uh, but before we get into that, let's start with maybe a, a hypothetical kind of background that some of you all might be familiar with. Let's uh, say you work at a trendy, cool little startup. You know, you got your scrum meetings and you got a small web dev team. You're building a product. You got some customers. Everything's going great. Uh, and inevitably, at a certain point, uh, all of a sudden, time for growth. It's time to, to do more things. Uh, and a question that usually comes up around that time, or one I've certainly heard before, is uh, this. So yeah, we've got the website. Can we, uh, can we make an app now? Uh, and so, you know, maybe you're like me, and you do some research, and you start looking into it, and you're like, oh, OK. There's a lot to keep track of. There's a lot of really awesome technology, really amazing tools, but coming from a team of maybe a small team of web developers that's already at capacity, there's a lot of complexity to building a whole new you know, native app for whatever your platform is. Now, on top of that, there is just the added, capacity, the added challenge that if you take one code base and you split it into two, you go from having to build every feature once and iterate it on it once and fix bugs once to keeping two things in sync and building things twice. And that can really slow down a team that needs to move fast and you know, iterate on their product. So what can we do about this? Uh, well, I'll kind of talk through one potential solution we've used, which is let's build ourselves a React Native app. We'll use Expo, which is amazing if no one's ever used it before. Really awesome tool. Uh, and we'll do something real nifty inside that React Native app called a web view. Uh, <laughs> and you know, there's more to it than just this. There, there's definitely uh, some more complexity. And you can link out to native screens for certain flows uh, and not for others. That's kind of what we do. But at its core, you are just shipping a native shell that renders your web app as an app itself. Uh, and then the challenge becomes, how do we make that a good experience? This is where I pause. And I say the thing that kind of undermines the whole thesis of this talk, probably, which is, you maybe shouldn't do this. Uh, in fact, please build real native apps if you can. Native apps are wonderful. And in the same way that Remix is amazing, because it encourages us to use the platform and shows us the great UX and developer experience we get by doing that, native apps are kind of the same. Using those native platforms gives you access to so much you know, animations, accessibility, interactivity. Uh, so you definitely lose something by not building in those platforms. And if you're in a position to advocate for that in your organization, please do. We all want more beautiful apps in the world. But business is business, and every engineering decision has trade-offs. And sometimes our job as engineers is to say, how do we still deliver the best experience possible with the constraints that we have? So before I dig too far into that, let's back up and talk more about Solve, the company I work at, and our kind of migration story. About a year ago, like I said, we started trying to look for a new tool, a new front end framework to replace our kind of very old aging React app where we'd done everything from scratch. You know, our data loading, our routing, our bundling, our server side rendering. And you know, we wanted something that had really strong opinions and gave us a ton out of the box. And Remix showed up around that time and it was a really compelling solution. It checked almost all the boxes for us. Uh, you know, we have a really dynamic app, users are logged in. And we need to show you things like, what are the urgent care locations that take your specific insurance? Or what are the soonest available appointment times today? And these are all things that you know, really needed that dynamic back and forth that something like a statically rendered app just wouldn't do as well on. So uh, that was looking great. But we ran into one particular problem that almost made us think, maybe we can't use Remix. And that was our native app. We'd had this app in production for years now. It was running on our old code base. and you know, if you notice, as I'm clicking around here, or tapping around, I, I should say, uh, it's quick. It's actually instant, because it's a single page app, functionally. Uh, and when you tap around in a single page app, you tap a link, the new page renders immediately. And then, you know, you show a spinner, and the data fetching begins. 
And for us, that was actually really important. We wanted that speediness when we're trying to replicate a native app. And Remix, for very good reasons, doesn't work like that out of the box. Out of the box, Remix has this model where the user taps a link, triggers a navigation, and then you know, Remix goes and talks to the loader on your server and then reports back with that data in your page renders. And that kind of implicitly creates a bit of delay. But the thing is, on the web, that's great. That's actually kind of a good thing. That's how Remix has gotten rid of spinners on so many of our pages and like, helped us build these more solid feeling web apps. But the crux of the problem is that expectations from users are just very different on different platforms. On the web, Remix really aligns perfectly with what users expect, how they expect to navigate pages. And on these native apps, users expect immediate feedback from all of their actions. And we need to figure out how to deliver that to give a convincing experience here. So to walk through a bit of kind of the solution we've come up with and how Remix has allowed us to do this, uh, let's look at a demo app I put together. This is a little music library app I used from a, some SQLite database of songs I found online. Those are definitely not the right album covers. Uh, but it's a really kind of straightforward Remix app. There's some nested routing here from the navigation to the playlist to the music, and it loads all your stuff in pretty simply. Just a simple loader, render the data, nothing more beyond that. So you know, let's take this basic Remix app and put it right in a native app frame, like I was talking about a second ago, and see how it looks. And you'll see when you tap around here, it just doesn't quite work. You know, I don't know if it shows up as well on the screen, but if you're tapping with this, you know, with your finger on your phone, that half a second, 750 millisecond delay between pages just doesn't feel great. It makes your app feel kind of broken, kind of slow, and that's not an experience we want for our users. So I bet a bunch of you are already thinking, hey, Remix has a really great solution to this, and it's called Defer. So let's look at Defer a little bit. Um, this is what that loader for the route we were just looking at would have looked like initially. You know, we're getting our playlist, we're awaiting this get playlist function, and then we render it in the page, done, super simple. So Remix Defer lets us say, well, let's start rendering the page immediately with some loading state and fill that data in when we get it. So that is pretty simple. All we have to do, get rid of our await call, wrap our response from our loader in this Defer function, and then we just use React Suspense in this await component in our page itself, and awesome, we've got asynchronous UI, it's great, it's slick, but there's one more problem here which is that we could put defer on all of our pages and they'd be super snappy on our app, but that's not the experience we want on our desktop or on our web at all, right? We talked about how like, web users have an expectation of how the web works, and I actually thought the experience in that screenshot or the video a minute ago of the desktop website was pretty nice. That's a good website. So the real question is, using Remix, how do we wait for data on the web but defer it in our app? How do we have both of these experiences that match users' expectations without having to duplicate our code, duplicate our routes, or do any of that. Uh, and Remix doesn't just have a solution, but it has a really elegant and powerful answer here. Um, so let's go back to that loader we had a second ago. This is the deferred route, uh, the deferred version of that playlist uh, route. So you can see immediately we get you know, the nav bar and the tab bar loading in here. And a second later, once our data resolves, we see it come in with a nice animation. Uh, this is great. So the question is, like, we know that we want to dynamically switch between whether or not we're deferring data. What do we have to do in Remix to make that possible? Uh, th the answer is uh, you just await it. That's all you got to do. Uh, and even though we still have the suspense and the await components there, Remix will see that that promise is resolved by the time we're returning from our loader and server-side render all the data already there and it works just like the initial page. So this looks really simple, and honestly, it is a really simple trick, but it's really, really powerful. The fact that Remix gives us the lever we need to flip between these two very different data loading paradigms with you know, five characters in your code. So let's maybe look in some more detail at what this would look like to implement you know, in that app more cohesively. So, uh, you know, say we build a little function called isNative, takes a request, tells us, if, tells us if it's coming from our native app. React Native will let us add a custom user agent on our web view. We can look for that or, you know, anything else you want here. You could look for just mobile user agents or whatever logic you have. And then we just have to take our loader that's deferring the data already uh, and just say, okay, well, if we're not on the native app, let's just await that data. And once we've done that, 
this is pretty much the solution to our problem. So we can go back into this demo app and we can see, all right, this is both, both of these examples are running the exact same routes, the exact same code, and on one hand, we have this nice website that navigates like a website and feels pretty good and works pretty well, and at the exact same time, we can go into this native app and we can see we've got these really nice, basically instant transitions between pages. We've got animations and it acts like you actually want a native app to behave, loading in that data asynchronously on these page transitions. Uh, and again, this seems really simple, but this is a really, really powerful tool. And the fact that Remix lets us do this you know, is allowing us to save incredible amounts of time and code duplication by powering both of these. Now, uh, going around your code base, adding those conditional awaits everywhere can get a little cumbersome. So I threw together a tiny package called defer if that just wraps this up in some nice logic. And you can just take your code, remove that if statement, and then just put defer if instead of defer at the end of your loader and pass whatever predicate you want to control what is deferred and what isn't. So now we can put this in all of our routes or in whatever format you want, and we get this really nice behavior anywhere we want in our app uh, really elegantly. So this was the answer to kind of the first part of our problem of like, okay, can we use Remix for both of these experiences? And the answer was not just yes, but it does a really good job at it. Um, but even beyond that, there's some more tricks we've learned along the way when using Remix that we can use to, to really take this experience of trying to give a good native app feel to the next level. The first one is one that a bunch of you probably are thinking of already, which is just caching. If you can throw a cache on slow data, uh, even with a short TTL, you know, store it in memory, store it in Redis, you can dramatically speed up the process of the user tabbing through your app and make it feel a lot better. But once you're doing that, you can start getting more creative too. So in a perfect world, we would use uh, link prefetch tags, but Safari does not live in a perfect world, and we have to live with that. So uh, instead, we know that we have this cache here. We can be creative about where we think our users are going to navigate through our app. So let's say we're on the playlists page here that shows you all your playlists. We can reasonably guess that a user is going to tap on a playlist next. So why don't we just warm the cache and prefetch those results when they're on the page and you know, not await the result so it won't block our response here, but just you know, start trying to prepare ahead of time for where we think our user might want to be. This is something we've used a lot in our app at Solve, and it's really sped up a lot of our flows and been a really powerful tool, just kind of intelligently doing some prefetching here and there in our loaders. Um, and okay, you've got your caching here, using defer, everything's going well. You can actually get yourself in another tiny little pickle that can lead to some subpar UX if you're not careful. So in the case of a cache miss, you know, defer works exactly like we want it to. We get this initial response, it starts streaming, uh, and then we see a spinner for a while, then it's done, the data loads, you see your page, beautiful. But something you can actually run into uh, every now and then is where you have this cache hit where your data still takes just a little bit longer to resolve than your route does to start streaming. And when that happens, you see a flash of spinner. And if there's any lessons from Re Remix, it's that flashes of anything are not what we want on our website, they're a bad experience. So what can we do about this? Uh, this is a trick I learned earlier this year that I think somebody in the Remix community tweeted about, so I definitely copied it from one of you. I don't know who, I'm sorry. Uh, but it's promise.race, uh, a very cool function built into JavaScript that lets you take a list of promises and wait for the shortest of them to resolve. So what does that mean in our code? That means we can say, okay, let's take this loader, and we know that on the average case of, say, a cache miss, or yeah, a cache miss, it'll take 500 milliseconds to load. But on a cache hit, maybe it's you know, 20 milliseconds on average. So what we want to say is, for at least like the first 30 milliseconds, let's build in a buffer where we don't show a spinner just to be safe. And all we have to do is await a promise.race here where we race two promises. One is a 30-second timeout, and the other is our data. And once we do this, we can say, OK, in the case of the cache miss where our data is going to be slow, the only difference we have is that we waited an extra 30 milliseconds before we show the user a spinner. They, they won't notice the difference. But in the case where we have a cache hit, uh, that little bright yellow section that used to be a flash of spinner is now just more blocking time. So the app just, again, feels more solid and more stable for our users, uh, which is always a nice thing. Uh, and then, past that, we just have a few other quick things we've learned that have really helped level up our native app experience and make this interaction feel better and better. Uh, a really simple one is just deploy to the edge if you can. 
even when you're using defer on Remix, there's still a client server round trip that happens there. So if your server is 400 milliseconds away, that's going to be latency that your users feel. So if you can deploy 20 seconds away or 20 milliseconds away from your user, that makes it feel a lot snappier. Uh, using CSS, CSS has a ton of cool little tick trip, cool little items you can use. Stumbled over my words there to uh, uh, make your interactions feel more native. You can set touch action to manipulation, which will remove this tiny little delay when you tap a button where it's waiting to see if you're going to double tap to zoom because native apps don't do that. You can get rid of the transparent black outline over every link you tap on iOS uh, that, again, makes you feel like you're on the web. And of course, the safe area inset variables make it so that you can have your app actually go edge to edge on the phone from the notch down to the home bar and fill the whole screen and make it more immersive. Uh, and finally, just a good thing to do, I always think, is to read the human interface guidelines of the platform. Apple and Google both have really amazing documents and write-ups about what does an iOS app feel like? What does an Android app feel like? And you know, if you're trying to mimic those things or build for those platforms, it's always good to know what are users going to expect and what do they want to see. Um, and that's pretty much all I got. I hope that there's some useful tips in there for y'all's apps. Um, thank you very much. <laughs>